Well, the mainstream media and the political left are really mad about the new House GOP committee assignments. Some members of Congress who are election deniers and who have espoused conspiracy theories now appointed to key committees tonight, including Marjorie Taylor Greene, who questioned the 9-11 attack on the Pentagon and said if she and Steve Bannon were in charge on January 6th, they would have won. Yeah, there was a lot of breathless reporting, but they also talked about George Santos. And CNN asked, asked uh, Congressman Byron Donalds about that. And here's what he said. In this country, you're still innocent until proven guilty. Um, <clears throat> there have been members who issues have come up in the past. They were allowed to be on their committees, be sat on committees. And then if the legal process takes hold, then we make adjustments. Mm -hmm. He also talked about uh, this guy right here. Richard Blumenthal. Some people call him Da Nang Dick. It's a true story. He lied about his service in Vietnam, but Byron Donalds later pointed out that, in fact, he is still a senator today. Or, as you can see from the headlines, a lie isn't a lie at the New York Times if you're a Democrat. They just say, your words differ from the actual history. That's how they describe a lie over there. Now, a lot of the network media are running to the defense of one of the Democrats who was ousted from these committees, Eric Swalwell. Look how well he fits in here with the ladies of The View. It seems totally natural for him. And then here he is on MSNBC. You were stripped of your committees. Um, why? Well, political vengeance. Uh, you know, Kevin McCarthy uh, seems to want to heat up the leftovers of a story that goes back to Barack Obama's first term. FBI has said three different times uh, in a rare form, they never talk about investigations, that all I did was help them, never suspected of wrongdoing. Today, the Washington Post fact checker. Well, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy did remove Swalwell from the House Intelligence Committee, and he said he had no choice. If you got the briefing I got from the FBI, you wouldn't have Swalwell on any committee. And you're going to tell me other Democrats couldn't fill that slot? He cannot get a security clearance in the private sector. So would you like to give him a government clearance? You ask this question. It's a fair question. Of course, this all ties back to Swalwell's alleged ties to Christine Fang, who reportedly worked in the California Bay Area on behalf of the CCP's internal spy agency. She also allegedly assisted Swalwell during his 2014 re-election campaign by helping him raise money. And she reportedly interned at his congressional office. A senior U.S. intelligence official told Axios at the time, quote, it was a big deal because there were some really, really sensitive people that were caught up in the intelligence network. And, of course, Swalwell was among the most significant targets of Fang Fang's efforts. Let's talk more about this now. Welcome in former Deputy Press Secretary for the Trump administration, Hogan Gidley. Great to see you, Hogan. Great to see you. Thanks so much for the time. Appreciate it. You know, it's interesting to watch KJP, uh, the condensation, or condensation, the condescension, should, I should say, uh, from the podium Both. yesterday. Yeah, there was, there was some condescension, some condensation uh, on our foreheads because we're so angry that we can't get answers here. Right. Um, but, you know, she seems to, to really enjoy this committee assignment story, too, because it gives her a chance to change the subject. Here she is. They should have to explain why allowing these individuals to serve on these committees and come clean with the American people about the, the secret agreements, the secret deals that were made with these extreme MAGA, uh, MAGA extremists in, that are currently uh, in, in the House. Oh, well, you, you know, you can tell she doesn't believe it because she can't get it out of her mouth. Yeah. Look, I, I think Karine Jean-Pierre is obviously in a difficult position because she's got nothing to work with. This administration has been an abject failure on just about every front, from the southern border to inflation to prices for gas and groceries, for crime. And this document scandal now is plaguing the administration, um, you know, like we never really thought actually would take hold. It has taken hold, and a lot of people in the press are angry about it. So she's pivoting and trying to change the subject and pick battles where she thinks she can win and point out, quote, unquote, MAGA extremists and all the ones on the right that she doesn't like. Again, forgetting the fact, of course, that Adam Schiff said he had stone-cold evidence of Russian yeah. collusion, took those briefings, lied about that. We obviously talked about Eric Swalwell. You guys played the clips. That guy's a clown. Um, so for the most part, um, you know, the, the, the left also putting forth as their leader, Hakeem Jeffries, who is an election denier, by the way, Karine Jean-Pierre Jean Pierre too. The podium, is <laughs> yes. also an election denier, yes. yes. So it's, it's quite rich. But look, spare me because I'm not going to take a lesson on how to explain things to the American people, the need to explain things to the American people from Karine Jean-Pierre, who's lied repeatedly from behind that podium, up to and including just yesterday when she talked at length about documents she says she knew nothing about. So either they're lying to her when they give her the information to go out there and, and explain to the American people, 
which of course loses all the trust with the reporters in the room, or she doesn't know or doesn't understand. Either way, it's not good and it's a bad look for the administration. And we also see, you know, there was another appearance by Swalwell uh, on MSNBC. We'll play another clip of that. But they always fall back to their default position. Whenever they're in any trouble or have to defend anything they do, they talk about January 6th or they call you a bigot or a racist. Here is uh, Nicole Wallace and probably the real reason why she wanted to have Swalwell on. Here he is. They have created a law firm, Insurrection LLC, and they're just going to carry out Donald Trump's grievances. Talk about not reading the room or the country uh, this past election. Insurrection LLC. He's so clever, isn't he, Hogan? Boy, I'll tell you what. I've seen him popping around D.C. a few times. It just kind of makes my skin crawl. Look, I mean, the fact of the matter is this guy had a, a, a sexual relationship with a Chinese spy. Um, you know, and, and Dianne Feinstein also over in, in uh, California had a driver who was a Chinese spy, a close uh, ally as well. So the fact that isn't a bigger story and the fact that more people aren't talking about this um, is, is kind of uh, – indicative of the mainstream media and why they don't have any cred uh, credibility with the, uh, the American people. But I, I thought Kevin McCarthy, Speaker McCarthy, really laid this out and said, if you heard the briefings I'd heard, you know, and, and then watch someone like Swalwell go out there and, and say the things he said, you, you know good and well all those things were not true. And so for the yeah. media to kind of be angry over this is somewhat ridiculous considering the nuts on their side, uh, ranging from anti-Semites to election deniers, get no bad publicity in the press. Instead, they are, they are heralded as heroes uh, and, and take all of their talking points and just try to beat us over the head with it. But I don't think it's wise. Yeah. And lastly, too, you know, just before we get to Bianca, I know she wants to jump in here, but, you know, when it comes to McCarthy and these committee assignments, what he's done with a lot of these picks is really revved up the conservative base in the House, and they're excited. You know, a lot of that, dis, you know, distrust in McCarthy seems to be put in the past, but let's let Bianca jump in here, too, because I know she wants to well, get in on this. No, I was just saying it shows their bias. Of course, they want to talk about these committees when there's so many other things to talk about. We knew KJP, you know, Hogan, she, you know, frankly wasn't ready for prime time before this. Now she's, you know, pulled off the podium. They're putting Kirby in. Let's talk a little bit about today. Obviously, the president wants this photo up really bad. He wants to go to California. He wants to be touring these sites where a lot of people, you know, frankly, Frankly, they're they're dealing with insurance claims, trying to rebuild their lives, maybe holding funerals for for people who are deceased. The White House strategy here is obviously to distract and to shut down, um, by, but yet claim transparency. Do you think this strategy will work, knowing how establishment media goes? Um, I think. Look, I think we have a White House press secretary in Karine Jean Pierre, and typically that entire room uh, uh, in the press corps are her deputies. They're the ones who parrot everything from the administration, saying whatever she says from the podium with a few few holdouts. James Rosen, of course, uh, the incredible reporter at Newsmax, being one of those folks, has a long history of, of uh, really holding administrations to account, and that should be commended in this day and age. But the fact that they're asking her questions on this one topic, it's the exception that kind of proves the rule. But look, the transparency for them is, this administration is non-existent. Remember, Donald Trump was an open book. He would have not just a two-hour cabinet meeting they would open up to all the press. Then we'd have a press briefing. Then he'd go out in the afternoon and have someone in the White House, some round table, he'd open up that to the press. Then he'd go out and give a two and a half hour speech Those in the, the rain days. and the cold. Yeah. It, it, right, the rain and the cold. And they still complained about access. This administration shuts them out of everything they're tight-lipped, even though they parrot most of the talking points that come from behind that podium. It's amazing, though, that the press um, kind of has a popularity somewhere between Congress and COVID. It's because they refuse to tell the American people the truth, and we've been lied to so many times at this point. I just don't think they have any credibility. Hogan, real quick, I got like 10 seconds here. Are you waiting for the first Trump tweet? Or do you believe these rumors that he's going to be back on Twitter and Facebook? I wouldn't be surprised if he's a candidate for president. You need those platforms to get your voice out there. I imagine the first tweet will be something about you <laughs> yeah, watching right. your show. That's what I think it's going to be. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. That's Hogan right. Gilly. I second Great that. To see there you, you go. Thanks, Hogan. That's right. Thanks so much. Hey, guys, it's Rob Carson. Your retirement funds are being threatened with even more losses from record inflation, recession, and skyrocketing interest rates. Fortunately, the highly trained specialists at American Hartford Gold can show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. If you call them right now, it's a special offer. They will give you a free gold coin on your first qualifying order, so don't wait. Call 866-935-4309. That's 866-935-4309 or text Newsmax to 65532. That's Newsmax to 65532.